Hey, and welcome to part three of the uh, e models build of the yeah, FX's new Grumman's F6F5 Hellcat in 124 scale. So, this part, what we're going to be doing? Well, before we did the cockpit, uh, that was a part six, 17. I think I said 16 in the, the clip, but anyway, it's part 17. So now we're moving on. Part 18, which is building up the side instrument panels for the cockpit. So we'll be painting inside of uh, the main part of the body and then fixing these parts in, fitting the cockpit itself in there, and then we'll build up a few bits and pieces on the inside and then move on to building up some of the structure behind the cockpit. So there's this tank, um, oxygen tank, for the racking situation there. And then we do the back, which has the uh, cable grip for landing on a carrier. And a bit of a structure there. So this shows what colour to paint the inside of this part. So as I'm doing B, which I'll show you in a sec which one that is, um, you do it uh, same colour as the outside. So that's the uh, blue. Um, that's the same as this grip thing, which is again is done the same colour as you're doing the outside. Um, do that part, so we're going to do B, so this will be the blue also. Right. So, things to tell you about. First of all, don't want to play the camera. There are a couple of, um, you can see the very shallow ejector marks on here. There's this one, this one really that showed, and this one was quite well hidden when you put the cockpit in. It's sort of tough up where you won't be able to see it, so uh, I could have left it, but I'd already filled some that weren't, being, weren't on show, so I uh, carried on with this one. Because it was very shallow, I used some sprue goo, which is basically uh, the remains of your extra thin with uh, bits of sprue cut up into it and uh, left to dissolve and uh, basically what it does is you dab it on let it dry overnight at least because it does take a while to dry and then sand it down and uh, it's basically like having the plastic rather than filler or anything like that we can shrink so I've done that one and there's a couple of others that might have shown depending where you were looking from so I covered those several inside here but I don't think you're going to see those um, there's a hatch at the bottom so unless you can cover your glide, you won't be able to see through that. I'm planning on having that open. And then the tail back part back here will be the uh, done in the blue with this part fitted in. Um, other things to tell you about before uh, we move on. This is made up of two halves with this put in the middle. And it says don't glue this. Um, but I don't know whether it's like on anybody else's when they made build those, but mine it only just fit, so it's going nowhere anyway. So I don't know whether it's uh, particular to this model that I've got or not, but anyway, that's going nowhere. I wasn't intending having it sticking out of the back because I think that would look a bit silly. Um, but uh, it seemed odd that he didn't uh, glue it, so it gave me the impression that it would move. Um, the bits we've got. Uh, so again, this one had one slightly raised injector mark, two very sh and three very shallow. So I've uh, put the sprue go in there. I've got, got to file those off in a minute too. So that's where we're up to with cutting parts off. So this will get us down to part 29. Look at that, there isn't an awful lot to do. So if this doesn't go on forever, I might start building up. So these are uh, extra bits inside, which probably uh, battery boxes and uh, radios and things. And then we're moving on to build then up the uh, the main part of the dashboard on there. So I think we'll definitely get up to about part 31, 32, and see how we get on. We might even go push down to 41, which is doing the other side, building up that side, and then we're looking at getting ready to things together. So anyway, we'll uh, see how we get on. Definitely going to get to here. 
for this part maybe a bit further. We'll see how, uh, how time goes. So uh, what I'll do is I'll sand off that these blobs of sprugo as I did them um, last night so I'll have plenty of time to dry and we'll make up bits and pieces then we'll do a lot of uh, priming so basically do the whole of the inside up to here in the green so I'm using the MIGS uh, AMIG 220 that's the resin chromite so that's all the way to there and then that's going to be the blue same colour as the outside is going to be and then we prime all these parts and then we'll uh, move on from there um, what I'll do as well, uh, but I want to show you at the moment, I'll get the other half out as well and we'll prime the inside of that and paint that up at the same time um, and if we get on to moving on to it with the other parts as I described uh, we'll see how we get on before I pause this part I'll just quickly show you on the cockpit a couple of bits I did after I finished the last one I thought it looked a little bit shiny so what I've done is given it a uh, very uh, dust over with uh, matte varnish just to sort of take the uh, the edge off the shine and I've done a couple of other bits and pieces uh, with using the oil stain just with the uh, I get these things just with the, the bud is just rubbed around for example just on the inside both sides of the joystick um, on the edge of the seats it's just where uh, things like clothing and uh, things like that rub against things after a while and uh, they leave a, a bit of a mark and uh, same with the back the headrest on the back of here it's just where it's just been uh, would have been touched by um, probably the back of the uh, pilot's helmet uh, on there so it just gives a bit of extra makes detail and wear and tear on there so uh, as I say that's slightly different from when it uh, was left on the last part otherwise it's the same it's just uh, quick going over with some uh, matte varnish just to take the, uh, the edge off the shine on some of the parts so we'll pause it there we'll uh, finish the sanding and we'll prime everything and then we'll come back and have a look see where we're, where we're up to there okay see you in a bit okay so you can see we've uh, prepared a few more bits and pieces so this is basically everything we need to finish off the inside of uh, the model so we can get ready to uh, fix the two halves together. So we've put these parts in already. Put these in because basically everything of new details is the synchromite uh, green. It's basically everything is that colour. So I've put these in for now. Um, I'm going to prime everything inside in a few minutes and that's the other side there's not much on this side again it's a bit of a frame on there so there's a few, a few bits and pieces to go in um, and so we've got first of the clear parts so as obviously you can tell is the uh, the dashboard it's basically to be uh, sprayed uh, black and have the decals applied appropriately there's an option where you can have uh, a bit of raised detail on the the dials um, but it's ideal to go for the uh, the clear one um, just a personal choice uh, you can go for which one only if you fancy and you can see the cabin and p on the front screen on there they all look pretty clear let's spot on that Uh, look easy to sort out uh, masking but that's uh, that's a bit in the distance yet um, these look nicely wrapped up in a bit of tissue so I'll wrap it back up again and comes a nice little rubber wrap bag somewhere safe so I just thought I'd uh, show you um, what the intention is for opening this part because not an awful lot of 
detailed weathering like there is for the, uh, the cockpit because quite a lot of this is uh, basically hidden inside behind the cockpit and the tail bit uh, and so the idea of is to keep this flap open but again you know where they're going looking around inside it but I say it's in there and we'll, uh, we'll put a bit of effort into it um, so we'll get these things uh, primed up and uh, so this is all the little dash dashboards so we'll get these primed up get some paint so basically it's either the zinc chromate um, or black apart from this this is the uh, blue zinc of the outside and the uh, tank over here this one's aluminium and I forget which color this one is we'll, uh, we'll get it all sorted out so uh, back in a minute when I've done some priming and uh, maybe some painting and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see where we're going See you next bit. Right, as you can see, we've done uh, painting the inside of the fuselage. So we've got the uh, green up to the back here, where there's like a bulkhead, which I'll show in a sec. And then this bit is done in the um, midnight blue. So on both sides there. And I've picked out a bit of detail on the front side of the cockpit. So the black bits up here, the like little red dial, and the black lever here. So there's a couple more bits and pieces to put on uh, in a sec and some uh, decals, which we'll do in a sec. And on this side, again, there's whatever this thing is. and uh, sprayed up and again just a slight frame for the uh, side of the cockpit so this what we've done is basically picked out with a bit of uh, basically dry brushing a bit of uh, dark aluminium just to pick the edges up and the same again just on the top here just pick out a bit of detail a bit of edging and the other things we've got we've got the other side of the cockpit some instrument panels so again there's some decals to fit on here And inside, so this fits in like so. Okay, just put that ed the edges with a bit of uh, dry brushing on there. So we're fitting those in again in a bit. And there's these parts which fit in. So it's like so, put that real and we'll make better sense. So anyway, we'll work those out. That's a smaller one. Again, a bit of dry brushing to bring out a bit of detail. We don't this to be able to see when the model model's finished. And there's a tank on there which we've picked out with a bit of uh, again dark aluminium. So that's the second bulkhead. It fits in like this. So yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of a panel line wash around that. Um, so they've done bits of levers. And over here we've got the instrument panel. So I've done this in semi-gloss black. So I'll be fitting the, the decals on for the uh, instruments on here. And there's a couple of other labels. So we'll be putting those on in a bit. And that then has this cover that goes over the top. Again, it's picked out there, paint, coloured in uh, semi-gloss. And we've got the uh, viewfinder. So that'll attach in the front of the uh, dashboard. So what we'll do is um, do a bit of decaling on some bits. I'll come back and show you what that looks like. And uh, again, a little bit of weathering. And then we'll start uh, constructing. So what we do is we fit the uh, cockpit in, and then build up a little bit around that side. Fit the dashboard, uh, dashboard main instrument panel in at the front. 
and build up a few bits and pieces at the back and then it's ready for the two halves to go together. So still a little bit to do. Um, I think it just sort of fits in the here uh, on the camera. So it's sort of like that. sorted out uh, when we're fitting it properly. So we'll, uh, we'll pause that and we'll come back when we're doing a bit of decaling and then we can start putting things together. Okay, see you in the next bit. Right, so we've done the uh, decaling for around the uh, cockpit. So you're showing here, so I've got a little bit of the instrument panel. All this here is uh, decal. Fuel on the top here, and obviously I fitted this in to the, uh, the side part of the uh, cockpit. Um, this is made up a couple of pieces. Obviously, this bit, the part across the top, and uh, they obviously went together quite easily. But when you try to fit them into this groove, it's like the cockpit or the piece itself was slightly different shape. So it took a bit of squeezing and holding to get it so it's the stick without leaving any gaps on there. Um I've fitted this this part in, whatever it is. And on this side there's a few more some decals on parts. And I fitted the uh, grab hook for landing on carriers in and a couple of the superstructure parts in there. A couple of bits uh, I'll show you in a sec, but this uh, fits in the cockpit uh, halves together. It's all lined up underneath, it's got this quite big joints that fit together. So it fits okay along the top, but then when you show it's not exactly here. Uh, Exactly the same all the way across. So that's going to need a bit of uh, clamping. Yes. So anyway, that, uh, that's one for a little bit uh, in the future. So that's that's my first thoughts on that. It's going to be uh, trickyish. Holding all that together. Right, one second. We'll have a look when we start sticking big pieces together. But that, uh, I'm sure that could have been better. And here we have the instrument panel itself, which uh, these decals went down brilliantly. Um, didn't even have to use any of the uh, microsol. They all set down with the microset very well. And then this uh, part goes over the top. I was considering putting uh, some clear varnish in to sort of sit, simulate the glass, but uh, I think they look fine as they are. And there's a map board on there with a the map of the uh, Philippines apparently. There you go, so that's the instrument panel. It's a little bit of weathering on this, but I do a, a little bit of dry brushing, light dry brushing, just to give it a bit of uh, depth. It's a little bit flat at the moment. Um, yeah, so, oops. There are the radios or batteries or something. They fit in as well. Uh, what else have we done? We've got the other part there with the, uh, this tank on it. I'm going to be fuel tank because it's not big enough, I don't think. So that's the going. So that goes in there, like so. And we've got a couple of parts to go in the side of the cockpit. A couple of levers and uh, wheels and things to fit. So we'll put those in once we glued it into to this half. So what we'll do 
is we'll pause there for a sec I'll just have a double check around what I've got um, and we'll come back in a sec and we'll have a look at see if we can get this on there okay so back in a sec okay so this uh, we're going to be fitting this on there which oops, trying to destroy the place in the instructions part 21 basically slightly simple as that what could possibly go wrong anyway we'll give it a go so we've got this big groove here runs around the front and you can see the top of this part it's a bit of a bevel which matches the top of here and we fit into the groove So like so. So you see that bit fits quite well. The other front this is oh, I'm showing. See that? It's a different shape. Anyway, we'll get this fitted in and tried off before we start trying to flex anything with the wet glue. So even that leaves and gap just along here if you don't push it anyway can work out your uh, sorry stop on the camera you're about the right position because this dot at the bottom should line up with the uh, gap at the, end, at the bottom so that that should feel like that so I'm going to do because this sort of uh, a big structural piece that he's all use the uh, Revel Contactor Professional. It's a bit stronger than, well, I think it's a bit stronger than the, uh, the extra thin. I've been uh, well using for the rest of the model. So, here goes. Just put a good amount uh, of glue down that groove. Sorry about playing the camera, but I uh, can't stop it because I'm holding. As you can see, you got a good, uh, good fit all the way around up to the top. So we will uh, leave that alone. See, it's moved already. So it pulls apart. So I say I'll pause there and hold this until it's dried, and then we'll come back and work on the rest of it. See you in a sec. Okay, just thought to show you this is what uh, that's resort to. So I've glued this part in as we showed before, and I've had to tape this down. As you can see there, there's great big gaps. So I have to take that in position while this dries, because if you pull that, while this is still wet, it just pulls straight out of the groove. So uh, I've put these, the second part in as well, and glued it together with this little shelf affair as well. See if that adds a bit of rigidity when I start tweaking around with this. Um, but apart from that, it looks okay else is lining up um, so anyway we'll uh, I'll leave that overnight to have a good dry and then uh, I'll come back in the next bit which for you will be only a few seconds but uh, for me it'll be here uh, tomorrow night and uh, we'll work on get the front to line up anyway so that's where we're up to coming together sort of nicely anyway see you in the next bit I anyway, thought I'd quickly show you what I'm doing to keep this side edge all uh, in contact. There's a lot of tension on there, it's still moving up a bit. 
So this really doesn't fit very well. And even when letting this dry overnight, it's pulled out a bit, so I've had to re glue that bit as well. So we'll see what that's like when it's all dried overnight again. But uh, there's a lot of tension to pull all these in to shape. A bit disappointing, but anyway, we'll work through it. So probably have to do the same again when we stick the other half on. Oh well, these things are tend to try us. See you in the next bit. Okay, so that's with the uh, two halves together. As you can see, it's been held together. I mean, this is still gaping like that. Here, uh, but it's mostly together. I mean, the bottom's okay apart from here. This really won't go any closer. I know the uh, supports and everything are all in the grooves correctly, but it's just not getting any closer. Because it has to be right where the hatch is. But, okay, get that out in a sec. So right where the hatch is. Have to do the hatch open. We just have to fill those uh, holes there because they're never going to be able to fill that properly with that edge. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll work around that. So that needs some filling. Although the lower bottom looks okay, or rather the tail fin looks fine. I mean this once it's together and glued should stick together okay. So again all of the seam along the top seems alright. And again you get to the back of the cockpit. Again there's a little bit of a gap there. But again with a bit of pressure and holding that'll go. Alright. Roll that sorry, banging the camera all over the place. Roll that uh, holding and uh, forcing together at the front. Once I put the two halves together they actually seems easier to glue it at the top and then Fit both sides at the same time. So I've on stop this bit. It's not the neatest in the world, but it should be alright once it's all all in. So that's uh, that's where we're up to. So I'll start doing some gluing of that in a bit. As you can see, it's uh, still quite a big plane. And we've got the engine and everything to go on the front here, wherever the side that is, probably around about there maybe. And obviously then the wings. So that's your cockpit. In there. Quite surprised I didn't knock this off while I was uh, doing it with the uh, fitting. Right. So I say, still a bit of work to do to get it to actually look fit. To look fit, actually to fit properly, um, especially this top scene at the back here. It's going to be fun. So anyway, I'll uh, I'll work on that and see how we get on. I don't know if you can see in there, but uh, we just make out cross members for those uh, either radio battery packs or whatever they are on there, and you can see. This way around the back of the uh, cockpit area with the tank, the oxygen tank on there. So you can see a little bit through that bottom hatch. I was anyway really going to pick it up and have a look. Okay, so I'll give that one of uh, stuck this people go together. Right, I'll pause it there. I'm back in a sec. Okay, so that's uh, glued everything up as much as I can. So I get... So what we'll do is we'll let that uh, have a good dry, and we'll pick up sanding joints and things in a later part. Because I think what we'll do, we'll call this uh, this part done, which was. Uh, 
finishing off each side of the cockpit doing some of the interior bits which was really hidden in there and uh, putting the two halves together well as best we can Have the two halves together, not the easiest thing in the world. Let's see, I've still got to work on this bit. I say we'll come back to this bit, we'll move on to another part of the model, and then we'll come back to this one when, uh, when it's done. So, anyway, that's uh, part uh, three done. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching this part, and uh, as usual, don't forget to go along to eModels, that's eModels.co.uk. Really good, uh, sharp, really good uh, website, just updated it. Um, so it's even better than it was before. Okay, so see you in the next part.